Hello everyone, welcome to another Python tutorial series, and in this video, I'm going to talk about an introduction to Platformer in Unison Engine, number 4, Collisions with Traps and Enemies. So let's run the code first and see what we have so far. If I run this from our last video, we see that we have a player in the center, we can move left and right, we can also jump. We see that we also have our enemies, we have our platforms, and we have multiple levels. So I can move around, I can go from place to place, and uh, just like that, we have a kind of basic 2D platformer. So um, you notice that we had traps and enemies added, uh, and the player can go freely through them uh, without any consequences. And that's because we don't have any collisions yet with them. So in this video, we're going to add in our collisions. Now, one thing I should have mentioned earlier, but didn't, is that the Yersena Engine built-in platform module will automatically flip the texture image attached to the player entity when it moves to the opposite direction. For example, when I press the D key to move the player rightwards, the player image will face to the right, and when I press the A key to move the player to the left, the image will then face to the left. Now, I didn't code this, and this just comes from the built-in module. The default facing direction is to the right, so when I chose the Texture image, I made sure to pick one that has the player facing to the right. So now let's add in our collisions um, with our traps. Um, in our update function, uh, in this loop for enemies and enemy, we want to basically check for or check collisions with trap with traps. And actually we can do this out of the for loop and have a variable this is equal to the absolute value of player.x minus trap.x and then we want to check if the distance is less than or equal to 1 we will set player.color equal to color.red otherwise so else whoops else set player.color equal to color.white. So basically when the distance between the player and the traps are less than or equal to 1, then we will consider that as a collision. And when that happens, the color of the player will then become red. Otherwise, uh, the player's color will be white. Now if I save and run this, we could see that this will only work with a trap in the middle. So uh, now that I'm on the trap, or this counts as a collision, my player is now red. Now if I go to the extended part right here, you see that even though I'm on the trap, my player is not a changing color. And that's because the trap.x here refers to the x coordinate for the middle trap. So this trap.x rep represents the x coordinate of the middle trap. So how do the collisions also work for the other two traps? The one on the left extended side and the one on the right extended side. Well then we can introduce uh, a module calculation in the if condition. So right here, we wanna check if the absolute value of the distance minus size mod the size is less than or equal to one or the absolute value of the distance minus size mod size is greater than or equal to the size minus one, then we'll set it of uh, the player's color equal to red. And so this module calculation is very helpful if you want to generate a repeating number series. And we've used this technique in several of our previous videos. Now for the middle trap, we only need the less than or equal to one condition right here. Um, but for the traps in the extended sections, we use the greater than or equal to size minus one condition. Um, and this also works, so we'll need to have it included. So it also works. Yeah. So if I save and run this, and I go to the trap on the right side, now you see that um, the player is red, even with the extended trap. I can go to the middle, Player is red and to the left, the player is red. 
Now we see that this only works for the X coordinate. If the player jumps into the air, on uh, basically over the trap, the player is still going to be red. Now to actually correct this, we need to add the collision detection in the Y direction as well. So to add in collision detection in the Y direction, let's first add in parentheses around this uh, condition for the X, and we want to check for the Y. So and the absolute value of out y minus ground minus ground dot y if this is less than or equal to one so if I save and run this if I go over a trap and jump now you see that the player is no longer red even though I am hovering or kind of above the trap and the player is only red once I am um, over the trap and standing on it. So next we're going to check for collision with our enemies. And since we have an enemy list, we could simply loop through each element to check. So now underneath the um, checking for collision with traps, we can check for check collision with our enemies. Now for enemy and enemies, as a matter of fact, I already have a for loop right here. So I'll just add that right there. So collision with enemies. Um, for enemy and enemies, we want to check if the absolute value of player.x minus enemy.x, this is less than 1, and the absolute value of player.y minus enemy.y, if this is less than 1, then we'll set player.rotation z equal to 90. So like the traps, we also need to check um, the collision in both the x and y directions. And when there is a collision, instead of becoming red, the player will basically be knocked down and basically uh, dead. So now if I save and run this, if I try to um, collide with an enemy, you'll notice now that the player is basically knocked down and he turned 90 degrees. Let's try that again. So instead I'll go to this one and you saw that, uh, so let's try that again. I'll collide with this enemy and here you see that the player is knocked down. So now when the player is knocked down and dies, the game will be over. And when the game's over, we want the enemies to basically stop moving as well. And to do this, we can set a switch variable, and the enemies will only move when the switch is a particular number. Now we'll create a global variable switch and let it be equal to 1 at the beginning. So let's have a global variable, call this switch, and set it equal to 1. And now in our update function, we'll call this global switch variable. And now we want to check um, basically if the switch is equal to 1, then we want our enemies to keep moving. So we'll add a condition for the movement of the enemies. That is, the enemies will only move when the switch is equal to 1. And so we have see dx of this we'll check if the switch is equal to one then we will just indent all of this because uh, we want all of this to be included now if the switch is zero uh, when there is a collision so collision with enemies and if there is a collision we'll set the switch equal to zero and now if I save and run this, if I collide with an enemy, you see that all the enemies stopped moving. And they all froze once the player lost. So this is the end of this video. If you have any comments, please put them at the comment section. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please hit the red button below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.